Good day everyone! I am Ma'am April Meiji Agustin and for this video, we will be discussing another topic which is all about the sources of the Earth's internal heat, the different parts and function of the Earth's interior, and the different types of heat transfer. Now let's get going! After going through this lesson, you were expected to number one to describe where the Earth's internal heat comes from, number two to identify the sources of the Earth's internal heat, namely radiogenic heat and primordial heat, and number three, describe the parts and function of the Earth's interior, and last one to describe the processes of heat transfer in the Earth's mantle. Heat energy plays a vital role in our planet. It is one of the extreme factors in what makes the world livable. If you think of a volcano, you know Earth must be hot inside. The heat inside of our planet moves continents, builds mountains, and causes earthquakes. But where does all this heat inside the Earth come from? There are two sources of the Earth's internal heat, namely primordial heat and radiogenic heat. Primordial heat. From the term it implies, primordial means existing at or from the beginning of time. Primordial heat is the internal heat energy that gradually gathered by means of dispersion in the planet during its few million years of evolution. Another source of the Earth's internal heat is known as the radiogenic heat. Actually, Radioactivity of some elements found in the Earth's crust. When we say radiogenic heat, it is the heat being produced during the radioactive decay. And what is a radioactive decay? Well, the term radioactive, as it implies, there is radiation and element that is radioactive emits heat. When we say decay, it is actually when an element is unstable and it disintegrates and changes into another element. Let us now discuss the parts and function of the Earth's interior. We all know that the Earth's interior is divided into layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core, based on its composition. So although the Earth's crust seems stable, the extreme heat of the Earth's interior causes changes that slowly reshape the surface. The crust is the outermost layer of the earth made of rock that forms earth's outer skin. It is approximately 5 to 40 kilometer thick. It is brittle in nature and considered the thinnest layer. Nearly 1% of the earth's volume and 0.5% of the earth's mass are made of the major constituent elements of the crust, which are silica and aluminum. And thus, it is often termed as C-I-A-L. S -I -A -L. The crust is divided into two parts, namely continental and oceanic crust. The upper part of the mantle and the crust together form a rigid layer called the lithosphere. Lithos is the Greek word for stone. Approximately, it is 100 km thick and is made up of pieces called tectonic plates. The tectonic plates are pieces of the lithosphere that fit like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle 
and move on top of the asthenosphere and may consist of both continental and oceanic crust. These seven plates make up most of the seven continents and the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The major tectonic plates are the following. African Plate, Antarctic Plate, Indo-Australian Plate, North American Plate, Pacific Plate, South American Plate, and Eurasian Plate. The mantle. The mantle is the layer of the rock that can be found between the crust and the core. The mantle is the largest layer of the earth. The mantle is about 2,900 km in thickness, nearly 84% of the earth's volume and 67% of the earth's mass is occupied by the mantle. Its composition is made from silicon, oxygen, iron, and magnesium. Its physical condition in mantle changed because pressure and temperature increase with depth temperature ranges from 870 degrees Celsius to 2200 degrees Celsius. The mantle is divided into two parts, the upper mantle and the lower mantle. The upper mantle is part of lithosphere on top of a stenosphere and it is approximately 6 to 250 miles thick. It can move and reshape through convection. It contains magma and olivine. While the lower mantle, the rest of the mantle between the upper mantle and the outer core is known as the lower mantle. It is denser and hotter than the upper mantle. The lower mantle is more solid than the upper mantle. Its composition are olivine, magnesium, and iron. The core is the innermost layer of the Earth. It is approximately 6,800 km in diameter or 3,400 km from outside edge of core to center of core. It is composed mainly of iron and nickel, and hence it is called as knife or nife, N-I-F-E. The core constitutes nearly 15% of the Earth's volume and 32.5% of the Earth's mass. The temperature ranges from 2,000 degrees Celsius up to 5,000 degrees Celsius, and it is consists of two parts, which are the inner core and the outer core. Let us now discuss the difference between the outer core from inner core. Outer core is only liquid layer. It is made up of liquid iron and nickel. This layer creates the Earth's magnetic field. The temperatures can reach up to 2,200 degrees Celsius, while the inner core can be found at the center of the Earth. It is made up of the scorching hot iron and nickel. This layer stays solid, though due to intense pressure. This layer may also contain oxygen, sulfur, and silicon. The temperature ranges between 9,000 degrees Celsius up to 13,000 degrees Celsius. Sources of heat and heat transfer both sources of heat, whether primordial or radiogenic, undergo heat transfer and it plays an important role to the continuous changes and development of our planet. Heat transfer includes the following, convection, conduction, and radiation. Convection involves transfer of heat by the movement of mass, which is a more efficient means of heat transport in the Earth compared to pure conduction. Convection includes atmosphere convection, ocean, and mantle convection.
The Hadley Cell, named after George Hadley, is a global-scale tropical atmospheric circulation that features air rising near the equator. Flowing poleward at a height of 10 to 15 kilometers above the Earth's surface, descending in the subtropics, and then returning equatorward near the surface. This circulation creates the trade winds, tropical rain belts, and hurricanes, subtropical desert, and the jet streams. Hadley cells are the low altitude overtuning circulation that have air sinking at roughly 0 to 30 degrees latitude. Convection dominates the thermal conditions in the zones where large quantities of fluids exist and thus governs the heat transport in the fluid outer core and the mantle. In geological time scale, the mantle behaves as a viscous fluid due to the existence of high temperatures. In convection current, the mantle of the earth moves slowly because of the transfer of heat from the interior of the earth up to the surface. This results to the movement of tectonic plates. Hot materials are added at the edges of a plate and then it cools. At those edges, it becomes dense by its exposure from the heat and sinks into the earth at an ocean trench. This starts the formation of volcanoes. Conduction govern the thermal conditions in almost entire solid portions of the Earth and plays a very important role in the lithosphere. Its processes happen in the Earth's surface. Conduction is one of the three main ways that heat energy moves from place to place. During the day, sunlight heats the ground, which in turn heats the air directly above it by a conduction process. At night, the ground cools and the heat flows from the warmer air directly above to the cooler ground via conduction. Radiation is the transfer of energy as electromagnetic waves. Although the sun radiates a big amount of energy, the Earth only receives a tiny fraction, but the small fraction received is enough to drive the water cycle and sustain life on Earth. By this time, you must know that the Earth's internal heat comes from two sources, mainly primordial and radiogenic heat, and the Earth is composed of several layers which are the crust, mantle, and core, and that there are three different types of heat transfer, namely convection, conduction, and radiation. Thank you so much for attending my class today, and I hope that you have learned something. All the pictures and ideas used in the PowerPoint presentation are credits to the rightful owner.